All right, so I was hanging out with a good friend of mine last night, and he knows I'm into watches, but he doesn't know that I have this YouTube channel. But he saw my watch and he asked me about it. He was like, hey, where'd you get that Rolex? And I said, you know, it's, it's a pre-ceramic Rolex, meaning it's not a current model they sell. But we didn't have enough time to get into all the nitty gritty details about Rolex and about this whole world that we love and sometimes hate so much. I wanted to make this video for you, Toby, but for anybody else who's buying their first Rolex or even their second, and maybe they made a mistake their first time around, whatever the case may be, there are a few things that you have to understand before you start whipping out your credit card. Because trust me, there are way more ways for you to get screwed than for you to get lucky and get a perfect watch. You know, the odds are against you in this Rolex game, especially pre-owned, which is the way that I recommend you go. So step number one is to choose a model that you like. Go on Instagram or Reddit or anywhere online and just look at a ton of pictures of different Rolex models. And the key to this step is you don't want to settle. Pick out a model that you like, that you that turns you on, that when you see it, it makes you buzz and stick with that model. Don't make compromises. Don't settle for you know a similar looking watch from another brand or even another Rolex but it's less expensive because it was a few years earlier and and it's a different model no pick out one that you absolutely love and that's the model that you're gonna go for if you can't afford it yet or you know you're not in a position to buy it yet then wait and save up a little more or wait for a more appropriate time to buy it, but don't settle. I've done it myself, I've settled in the past. You're only gonna regret it and you're gonna end up selling that watch at a loss and trying to get the one that you wanted originally and it's a whole mess. If you just stick to your guns from the start, you'll have a way better time. Now, number two is, unless that model that you love is a 36 millimeter Datejust or a 34 millimeter Oyster Perpetual or any two-tone watch or any full gold watch, unless it's one of those watches, forget about buying this watch from the authorized dealer. Just put that out of your mind. You're not gonna buy this watch from Wempy or Watches of Switzerland or any of these, even a Rolex boutique. Forget about it, you're not buying it from them. Because unless you're willing to spend a ton of money on other stuff at that dealer or, or boutique, they're not gonna sell it to you. And if they do, they'll sell it to you in a year, two years. You can put yourself on a, on a wait list at one of these places if you already have your first watch that you love. But if you're in that itching stage, if you're in that awesome and really exciting stage in watch collecting where you, you have to have that watch now, forget about the authorized dealer. It's not gonna happen, and if it does, it's gonna be a year down the line. So get the watch you love first, and then maybe put yourself on a list at the authorized dealer for your second favorite watch. So there's essentially two different ways to buy any watch, any Rolex. Number one is through the authorized dealer. Now those are brand new watches from the source. It's like buying a pair of Nike sneakers from the Nike store, the same thing. Like buying a Mercedes Benz from a Mercedes Benz dealership. The second term is the gray market, sometimes called the pre-owned market or the aftermarket or whatever. It's all the same thing, which is essentially secondhand dealers of Rolex watches and other brands, but we're talking Rolex. They sell used watches, but they also sell brand new watches. The new watches come from people who bought Rolexes from the authorized dealer and are flipping it, you know, within a day, within a week, they're flipping it to the gray market and the gray market is selling it to the end consumer. And so you might ask me, well, why would I go through the gray market? I don't wanna pay more for this watch. I want to pay retail price. I know. I feel you. Yeah, I want to pay retail price too, but it's impossible. It's not going to happen. Now, I'm on the list at an authorized dealer for a Submariner. It's been almost a year, but I'm not willing to wait that long, and I wasn't willing to wait that long for this sub. Now, I liked this sub more, so I didn't mind buying this on the pre-owned market because it was the only way for me to buy it. I, I can't buy this watch new from Rolex. They don't make it anymore. Choose a watch that you want. Choose the watch that you love. Look at older models. Look at models from 2005. Look at models from 2012. You know, don't don't just stick to Rolex's current range. Really look around and see which model 
speaks to you. So we're not buying it from the AD, we're buying it from the pre-owned market. And once you know which watch you want, it gets a lot easier, trust me. So let's say for instance, the watch you want is a Submariner. Now my friend mentioned the Submariner to me yesterday, he said it was the one that he liked. Okay, considering that you've looked around on Instagram and the watch you still want is the Submariner, fine, let's go with the Sub. Do you want the current model sub, which is a 41 millimeter. Do you want the previous model sub, which is 40 millimeter, and the lugs are a little bit fatter? Do you want this one, which is pre-ceramic, meaning the bezel is aluminum, not you know modern ceramic bezels? Which sub do you want specifically? And you have to be specific. You have to, before you spend $10,000 on anything, you should know the reference number of that thing. That's not much to ask. You wanna be able to type in on Google, a series of five or six numbers that will give you a result of all the same watch consistently. 14060, it'll show all pre-ceramic no-date subs. 16710, it'll show all pre-ceramic GMT Master 2s. Not GMTs, not ceramic GMTs. Pre-ceramic GMT Master 2s. You should know the reference number that speaks to you. That's not much to ask when you're spending 10 grand. If it's a sub, do you want a date? I need the date. For my daily watch, I need the date. But a lot of people don't like the Cyclops lens on Rolex date watches. Maybe you want a no date sub, that's totally fine, but you have to know that. And again, with subs, do you want the ceramic bezel? Look at pictures. Do you want that shiny, glossy finish on the bezel, or do you want a more matte, classic looking, I would say, bezel? Now, the real difference between the bezels is the ceramic bezels are not gonna scratch. Like if you scratch it with your finger or, or with a knife even, it's not gonna scratch, but it will shatter. If you smash the watch up against a wall or a railing or, or anything, the ceramic can shatter. It can chip, which in my opinion is worse than what happens with an aluminum bezel. What happens with an aluminum bezel is it can scratch, if I take the end link to an SKX and I start scratching the aluminum, it's going to scratch. Now, it's not that easy. It, it, I've had this watch now for close to six months. I wear it every day and I don't baby this watch. I wear, I stick it in my backpack amongst all the shit in there. Everything. At work, all the, everything I do with my hands, I wear this watch and it, there's still not a single scratch on the bezel. So it's not easy to scratch. but it's possible it will scratch, but it won't shatter, it won't chip. Furthermore, if you do need to replace the bezel on either watch, the ceramic bezel is much more expensive to replace. It's more expensive and in my opinion, it's not as tough and rugged as an aluminum bezel. But a lot of people disagree with me, that's fine. And if you like a ceramic bezel more, then go with the ceramic. Don't get an aluminum bezel watch. You're not gonna be happy. Once you've figured out exactly the model that you want, exactly the, the year, the range of years that your model was made, like I said, you should know the reference number. The reference number is a five or a six digit number that you should know. And once you know that, and you can type that into Google and say, yeah, this is the watch I want, now you can start shopping around. I've made a couple of Rolex shopping videos. They're on my channel, I'll, I'll link them up here. But essentially, there are a few criteria that you need to look for. Your watch should have papers, meaning the original papers that were sold with the watch, not a warranty paper from, you know, the the current seller of that watch, you know, a certificate of authenticity. No, 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 no. The original Rolex papers. On Chrono 24, it will say definitively papers or no papers. So you want to look for a watch with papers. Trust me, I've sold watches that don't have papers and it's way more difficult. You get jerked around by dealers if you sell it to a dealer, and you just don't get as much interest from people on eBay, like private people on eBay or Chrono24. You're competing against a bunch of watches with papers, and those watches with papers are out there, so just go for the watch with papers. It'll serve you better in the long run. Not to mention, it's a nice piece of provenance to have. Like I said, I've had watches without papers and I always felt like there was something missing. I, the watch didn't feel complete to me. Even though I never look at this watch's papers. They're in this drawer down here and I never pull them out, ever. But I know that they're there and it's a 
you know, peace of mind for me. Trust me, you may not think that now, but down the line, if you get more into this stuff and you start getting really into Rolex, you will want the papers. Plus, if your watch is even somewhat collectible now, it'll be more collectible in the future. So here's the price without papers and here's the price with papers. As the value of the watch in general re increases over time, the difference between the models without papers and with papers, that difference becomes greater. Trust me, you look at Daytonas or, or GMTs at auction these days, like the ones with papers are the ones that sell for crazy money. Those are the collectible watches. So why not have your own collectible watch? The second criteria is you want to look for watches in your city. If you're in New York, which I know you are, Toby, don't look for watches in LA, don't look for watches in Florida, don't look for watches in Europe or Japan or the UK. There are plenty of dealers in New York City alone. Way more examples of watches than you'll ever need to, to look at. You will find the perfect watch in New York. The final criteria, which in my opinion is the most important criteria, and it's also the criteria that is not spoken about enough, especially to new buyers. If you just get on YouTube and start watching watch videos, no one talks about this. No one recommends to new buyers that they need to look out for this. But I'm gonna do it because it's extremely important, at least to me, and to ignore this factor, this criteria, will be at your own detriment in the long run. And that criteria is the watch should be unpolished. No polishing, nothing. You should be looking for listings that say the word unpolished. If it's had a Rolex service by Rolex, then a polish is okay because Rolex uses computers and lasers and it's it literally perfect. So a Rolex polish is okay, but anything else is unacceptable and you do not want to buy it. The reason why you don't want a polished watch is A, you're paying $10,000 for a watch from Rolex. You're not paying $10,000 for a watch from Joe Schmo down the street. If it's been polished by Joe Schmo down the street, the skin of the watch, every surface of the watch is Joe Schmo's handiwork. It's not Rolex's handiwork anymore because Joe Schmo has taken a polishing wheel and grinded the outside of the case all over with Joe Schmo's handiwork. It's no longer a Rolex finished watch. So you're getting kind of scammed in my opinion. You're paying $10,000 for a Rolex watch, but you're getting a way lesser watch in my opinion, okay? But my opinion is right. Number two, there's, especially on pre-ceramic watches, there are very particular lines and chamfers and edges that the watch case has. All of that gets eradicated by a sloppy third-party polish. And you'll notice on really polished watches that those beautiful sharp lines of a Rolex case are dull and rounded by these people. They destroy the cases of these watches and they're irreparable. Rolex is not gonna be able to fix it. The, when you polish a watch, you're literally scraping microscopic layers of metal off of the, the outside of the watch. And that's what they do in order to make the watch look new in the glass case. Don't settle for watches like that. Get yourself an unpolished papers watch. You'll, you'll appreciate it in the long run, I, I promise you. I promise you. So, once you know the model that you love and you found it in your city with papers and it's unpolished, call the dealer to make an appointment to see the watch. Do not buy the watch online. Do not type in your credit card online and buy the watch that way. You must see the watch in person. Now, when you go see the watch, you have to ask questions like, are there any replacement non-original Rolex parts in this watch? Has it been serviced by you guys or has it been serviced by Rolex? And most importantly, has it been polished? Because like I said, you may not be able to tell, and especially if a watch has only had one polish, I'll admit, it's hard for me even sometimes to tell if a watch has had one polish. Three or four polishes, yeah, I can tell like that, but one polish, one light polish, look, I'll be honest, I can't tell, 
okay? But ask them. They'll tell you because they think that you want a polished watch. These guys operate on the assumption that we want polished watches, which 98% of the watch buying public does want polished watches. They don't want to buy, you know, a pre-owned watch with a bunch of scratches on it and, and dents and dings. You know, most people don't want that, but we do. I'll take that watch because I'll take it to Rolex and Rolex will polish it and make it literally a brand new watch. Yeah, it'll cost a couple hundred bucks more, but it's so worth it. Ask them for timekeeping records. So they will have a time grapher at their shop. When you make the appointment, ask them, hey, can you put it on the time grapher and have the results ready for me when I get there? Or can I see it in person? Can you put it on the time grapher in person? If they say no to you or if they are like, brushing you off and, and not really giving you what you want, that's it, end it. You're not interested anymore. You're about to spend a huge chunk of money on a frivolous, unnecessary item. $10,000 plus on something you don't need, on a luxury, uh, you know, an excess, and they can't answer some basic questions like, has it been polished or can you put it on a time grapher? They put every single watch that comes into their shop on a time grapher. So if they're not willing to do it for you, move on. You're not buying a watch from them. Those people are shady and I don't know what they're up to, but not trustworthy. And if everything checks out, if it's a good example, it's not been polished, it's got papers, it's got no replacement parts, it's keeping relatively good time, it's got the original bracelet, not a replacement bracelet, not a bracelet from a different time or a different model, it has matching parts, everything checks out, now you can buy the watch. As you can see, there's a bunch of different ways for you to get screwed over in this process. You buy a watch that looks good to you, but it's been polished 10 times. And unbeknownst to you, the lugs, which are, you know, this area here, the lugs are shaved down to little nubs and you're gonna pay 10,000 for that watch. But let's just say you wanna sell it in a year or two, no one's giving you $10,000 for that watch. Don't be the victim in that transaction. Don't let them sell you an unworthy piece. You want to get the most for your money and there are so many ways to get screwed in this process, I'm telling you. So if you stick to what I said in this video, you will get a good watch for your money. I promise you that. If you have any questions, please leave a comment. I will answer. I answer all questions. So please ask me a question or if you have advice, some add-on advice to this process, which I'm sure you will, some of my subscribers are have way more experience with watches than me, please leave a comment and let my friend and anybody who's buying their first watch, let them know what they need to look out for. Give them some advice, please, because I, I definitely left out some key details here, but I did my best. This, to my knowledge, is, is everything that I would do before buying a Rolex, so, yeah, good luck to you in your Rolex purchasing and uh, happy hunting and peace out.